Ziska was ruthless by modern standards. He often burned his enemies to death, most frequently uh, Catholic monks. So Jan Ziska is this man here, whose statue is on this monument. He was a minor uh, bohemian noble. When he was young, he sold his land uh, for financial reasons. It wasn't profitable anymore. He became a soldier. From a pretty young age, he only had a uh, one eye. In Czech, Ziska means one-eyed. So there's some, it's not certain whether uh, he was named basically John One-Eyed or whether uh, Ziska means one eye because of Jan Ziska. But either way, he only had one eye for most of his life. Later, he loses the other one as well. So he worked for King Wenceslas, who we've talked a little bit about. He was the king when uh, Hus was, uh, was killed. He was probably a personal friend of King Wenceslas. He also met a lot of influential Bohemian nobles. He fought in guerrilla wars that were going on between the kings men and other barons and mercenaries. He was part soldier, part highwayman. He also fought in Poland. Up until just a little bit before this time, Poland was actually pagan. But the Pope authorized the crusade to convert them. The king um, eventually converted, making the nation officially Christian, but the Teutonic Knights were still at war with them. And so Ziska fought in the Battle of Grunwald, which is one of the largest battles in medieval history, with the Bohemian mercenaries. Around 1417, Ziska returns to Bohemia. He's a war hero from his fighting in, uh, in Poland. He is an experienced soldier. He's an officer in the Royal Bodyguard, later becomes a courtier for the king. At this time, always in Prague, Hus is preaching in Bethlehem Chapel. Queen Sophia, the, uh, Queen Wenc King Wenceslas' wife, was very accepting of Hus's teaching. She, uh, she may have been an actual believer, unlike the king who is not. So Ziska accompanies the queen to hear Hus preach, and he becomes converted uh, during that time. Hus is killed. The Bohemian nobles and much of the people support him and end up uh, throwing out the emperor as king. So let me just read a letter from Jan Ziska to a commander of uh, a Hussite city that was under siege, just to give a bit of an idea of uh, what he was like. He says, May God grant you to return to your favor as at the first, that you may first do brave deeds. Dear brethren in God, I beg you for the sake of the Lord God to remain in the fear of God as his most beloved sons, not to complain if he chastises you. Remembering the founder of our faith, our Lord Jesus Christ, you will defend yourselves bravely against the wrongs which these Germans endeavor to inflict upon you. You will thus follow the example of the ancient Bohemians, who valiantly, using their lances, defended both God's cause and their own. And we, dear brethren, seeking the law of God and the good of our commonwealth, will strive that every one of our men who is able to wield a club or even hurl a stone should march to your aid. Therefore instruct your priests that they may, when preaching, call the people to arms against the Antichrist, because they uh, believed that Sigismund was at least an Antichrist or even the Antichrist. He continues, Let it also be proclaimed in the marketplace that all, both old and young, must keep watch and ward at all hours. Remember your first campaign when you fought bravely, humble men against the great, few against many, unclothed against men in armor. For the arm of God has not been shortened. Therefore trust in God and be ready. May the Lord God grant you strength. Jan Ziska of the Chalice. The Chalice, of course, being the emblem of the Hussites. Ziska was ruthless by modern standards. He often burned his enemies to death most frequently uh, Catholic monks. But his standing orders were to spare women and children, and this was not always obeyed, but usually he offered to spare the defenders' lives if they surrendered. If they refused, when the city was captured, he would put everyone, all the men, to death. This was, however, because he was sparing women and children, sparing those who surrendered, you could argue that he was merciful by the standards of his time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also visit www.discerninghistory.com 
for more videos and other resources.